Welcome to the Challenge Chronicles. I'm Devin Jordan. I'm with Trace Armstrong and Rob McIntyre. We are here to cover the first episode. Well, I guess it would be somewhat inadequate to call it the first episode of the Challenge Double Agents because of the... Uh, let's talk about that first. That episode that they released, I think Trace said they released it on Monday, traditionally would have just been part of the first episode that really had a first episode feel of when they get to the house, meet everyone, uh, find out about everyone's situations and what shows they were previously on. I really enjoyed it. And we'll definitely talk about a lot of that here because it, it was definitely very informative, but what did we think of the, that episode and the first episode that aired last night being Wednesday? I thought they were both very good. I definitely agree on the um, initial episode. I actually like that they split them up into two different parts um you would worry that some people might have not considered that initial episode like essential viewing when i think kind of was just for how it set up everything but how much but so much of the first episodes that i end up just not liking that much because it's all exposition and introducing everybody to new characters and storylines that we may already be aware of um but at least with and this first episode was still a lot of setup but at least they took out a decent amount of it with the preview episode Agreed. I really, really, really enjoyed the preview episode, especially because it helped me learn some of the cast members I had never seen before. But instead of it being 30 seconds as part of the first episode, each character got a good solid two to three minutes. And then the existing characters, we were able to catch up on where they are in life. Um, I would say that this is probably one of the biggest news items that came out of the preview show is Leroy said that this is going to be his last challenge. So he think, wants to win. I think he said that on the first episode, didn't he? No, he said it at the end of the preview, the preview episode. Okay. He said it in his intro videos as well. But yeah, he said it in the preview. Um, we'll see if that sticks. He seems like he's a little bit more direct with it. But like people, the, the cha- any challenge competitor retiring is like Brett Favre. Where you, you, it's, <laughs> Seriously? You if they call and you're bored, you'll come back out of retirement. That's a pretty accurate state. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, quote unquote, retired after X's two. I'm surprised that they really didn't try and hammer home that in the first episode then. But I guess they were too, a little bit too preoccupied with the narrative between. There was a lot going on. They, they pretty much really just want to emphasize the relationship between him and Cam. And that's kind of really what I did not want to see when we first saw the cast cut come out because I knew that they were just going to drill that home every opportunity they got. So real quick, there was one person from the group of first time players that I don't think we really knew what she would be like when she, we saw that she would be on the show. I don't think any of us knew anything about her that once she started to speak and I saw the way that she interacted with other people on the cast to me, I was like, oh, she's going to be a lot better than I thought. Who do you is think? Is this Amber? Like? Is this yeah. Gabby? Oh, Amber. Which Amber? Amber, Amber Big Brother. Uh, the Amber B. Mm-hmm. Isn't she Amber? Is she yes. Amber B or Amber M? So Amber B Amber. is Big Brother and with Darrell. Amber M is Are You the One and with Nelson. Yeah, I think Amber B is going to be really good. I think Agreed. she's going to be good too. I, I, think all, I think a lot of these rookies, especially on the female side, are going to be good. Yeah, that was the one thing I came away from um, in the preview show, because I actually watched the shows in reverse order. I watched the first episode and then I watched the preview episode and it didn't detract from anything, but it was great to have these little plot holes filled in. Um, When Wes said and was talking to the rookies, he was like, this is like the best female cast we've ever had. He's not wrong. This is an extra super great competitive female cast and you don't even have a heavy hitter like laurel or emily involved well there's definitely at least one heavy hitter well fair (laughs) but you don't even have jenny last year's champ who is arguably the most athletic female in a while but i mean the addition of natalie from survivor who appeared to be in beast mode for this thing and took it seriously by the way like a lot of these I was really interested to see how Natalie was going to interact with the cast and how she would perform, but she had never really heard of the challenge before she started getting stuff on Twitter that she should look into it. But she came in having done her homework and was ready to compete. I was impressed with how she showed up. I think if Natalie's on the show, she she's there to win, dude. Like I don't, I, she's not like coming on just to have a good time. 
No, I agree. And I even thought that um, uh, that was some, oh gosh, who was it? I think I even underestimated Leo Rush, the pro wrestler coming into this as well. Like I thought, you know, he was going to come on and be a personality and he kind of was, but he also came in looking like he wanted to win. And I think it's, You know, bringing in these other shows, I think, is injecting a new era of the challenge, not just from a casting perspective, but from a competitive perspective, because a lot of times we've talked about this in previous seasons. It seems like a lot of the cast is there to just have a good time and party and then they'll go home when they go home. These people showed up wanting to win. What did you. Oh, the I thought the, the moment between Leo and Kyle from the preview episode when they put on that fake wrestling match was hilarious. And that seemed to really kind of endear a lot of people to Leo and kind of help him build a relationship with a lot of people. And I think that's why we saw the vote be so lopsided for Mm -hmm. the first vote. It seemed like I took a screenshot of it, but it seemed like pretty much everyone voted for CT and Ashley. Mm -hmm. I I don't, Rob, do you have the exact count? Um, I think it was like Wes and Natalie didn't vote for them. Big T didn't vote for them. Even like Kyle voted for them, which I thought was crazy. Kyle voted for them. Um, uh, so that we Nelson could, voted I, for them. I would have assumed Kyle and CT kind of were working together just based on past history and the way they interacted. I would have not expected Kyle to vote CT. I was pretty shocked. Well, with only four champions, I just think it's like there's no real place for them to hide like CT usually does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was cool, and we'll stick on Leo Rush for a minute. They showed the conversation between him and Tori and then cut in between his confessionals talking about, you know, how he lived in a group home when he was 14 and how pro wrestling saved him. And he was talking about his kids. And he even addressed the elephant in the room that I mentioned in our draft show is the the news coming out of him from WWE is that he was extremely arrogant and things like that. And the fact that he put that out there on Front Street, that he's like, you know, the way I conduct myself, some people see it as arrogant. And he really went to a great effort to say that's not necessarily true. And here's why. And I thought it was just great character development for a guy who's brand new to the show. Like after those three to four minutes between him and Tori and the confessionals, I was ready to root for that dude. Um, I thought it was really funny. I don't remember the exact people that he mentioned, but when Corey said at the beginning of the show, he was like, we have Lolo Jones, who was an Olympian. We have, he may have said Natalie Anderson from who won Survivor. And then he was like, and then we have Josh from Big Brother. And he was like, nah. (laughs) 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 Completely trying to discredit him right away. So, all right. So I think this is really one of the big takeaways from the preview episode and this episode and that's the Big Brother Alliance. I think this is yes. going to be one of the dominating narratives of the entire season. And something from the preview episode that I really think that they should have included in this episode is that the Big Brother Alliance can includes Fessy, Casey, Josh, and Amber B. Also with Corey and Nelson. And, and Nani. When... And Nani too? I didn't hear I that. Yeah, Nani and Nani. Casey specifically called out Nani that she's working with her. Uh, I remember in the preview episode when Fessy called that out, he he made a point to say that he thought that those four primary members were playing chess and that Corey and Nelson were playing checkers. And so I think it's interesting that despite putting Josh in any sort of any sort of political savant role is like jumping the gun. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently that. Apparently he includes in that, and he has also, um, what else was I going to say? He includes him in that, and I think multiple people, um, I think Casey, when she calls out the Big Brother Alliance, does as well. So I really think that that's going to be one of the driving forces of this season. Mm -hmm. I also found that interesting for the Big Brother Alliance was the fact that cam showed her cards way too early in episode one when she went that aggressive episode one i went girl you're gonna regret this this Uh, is way too early it's one thing to take a big shot but wes was like listen we don't even know all the rules of the game yet 
let's be safe until we know what we're dealing with. And it really did kind of backfire because now Wes and CT know where everybody stands and they're more than likely still in the house. Yeah, but like I mean, they don't have much think, ground to stand on, it looks like. Who, Wes and CT? I think they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. I think CT more so than Wes. I think Wes is going to keep getting thrown into elimination and someone's going to take him out like a Fessy or somebody. I mean, I think they can scrap it together a little bit, but I don't think... I mean, with the way this format works out, um, anybody can kind of win power in a week and then get get in the position to make a move. But I don't think that, like, Cam's in a vulnerable position at all. So do you think that they're going to keep up this trend of throwing in winners and really strong players? Because I do not. I don't think this is going to last. I think next week... It depends who's in power. I also think it depends on the format of the game. This format of the game gives them that kind of an opportunity early. If it was a more traditional version, like Arrivals and, you know, that kind of thing, I think that it would be very different. But this game allows you to throw champions in and vets really easily. Like it's not hard to get somebody into elimination with this, this format. Because there's no last place going in. So it's just the winner's team is picking one pair. And not only that, with the winner's team picking a pair, they also can see the elimination and see, like if it's like Wes who's in the elimination and then they see it's a weight-based elimination, oh, we'll just throw in Terrell or Fessy or something. And then what, what's Wes going to do? Who did you think Fessy and Anissa were going to throw in? What I thought I could, it seemed like it was going to be Weston and Natalie based on how they were just talking. And then also, like we got a little, we didn't get a ton of Weston and Natalie, but we did get like the stuff with them plotting at the beginning. Um, and they seemed like they were trying to showcase Wes as being a little overconfident in his standing. So I, I thought that made sense from a narrative perspective. Yeah, the free, the preview, Fessy particularly called out, look at Wes. He's already taught, or it was Nelson or Corey or somebody. I can't remember exactly who it was, but I remember it somehow was getting back to Anissa and Fessy. Like, look, there's Wes. He's doing the smart thing, befriending the rookies, and he's already working. We haven't even learned what the game is, and Wes is already working. And you could tell that Anissa sees Wes as a threat politically, and she said, I'm here to win this time, and I, I've played the friends game before. It's time to play for me. It's weird to me she seemed to laser in on CT and Wes as, like, antagonist of hers so i mentioned that in her like intro video as well because like yeah. josh and kyle were the ones who put her in that elimination josh kyle and fessy were the ones who put her in that elimination um actually did fessy vote for her i think i think so he voted for melissa and jenny and josh voted for anisa but anyways like josh was like the one josh and kyle and johnny were the ones who were like plotting to get her an elimination that late in the game it wasn't Wes or ct and it seems like she has no will, ill will towards uh Josh. And then also, like, they're on the guy side of the ledger, so I don't think them being a threat in a final should be as much of an issue for her, at least right now. I yeah. didn't get it at all, uh, to be honest. Also... Well, I mean, but then again, maybe it could also just be a power dynamics thing, where it seems like her and Cam have a pretty close bond, and then Wes is always going to be trying to take power as long as he's in the house. So if you get him out, then maybe you can take more of that pole position. And I actually agree with you, Rob. I think that Nisa is closer, more closer tied to Cam than we were led to believe this episode. And so I think her strategy is going to mirror what Cam's doing. Rob, what kind of odds would I have to give you to bet on Anissa to win the show? To win the final? Significant. Like a thousand Very significant. I'll, I'll, I would take that. You would if take I'm a putting in a dollar and I can get a thousand for it, I'd take that bet. These finals, like we have the Lord of the Rolls one final, and then it's like it could just be a puzzle. Like they, they... when when was the last final that she would be able to win? She could have won Vendettas. Yes, that's a fair statement. Uh, I think the I other one Vendettas. Vendettas have the first day that's like a somewhat of a normal final, and then the second day is just a puzzle, and that's it. The second day, and was you had to wear like battle armor as part yeah. of it, like armor. yeah. But even like. Like that's what it, that's what it would take for her to win, though. It would take it literally coming down to just one thing that she might be able to fall ass backwards in. Because if it has anything having to do with endurance, weighted towards the large majority of what will determine whether or not you win the final, she's toast. She's not going to win. Well, for, well, for one, it's a pair season, and then two, like that's not an implausible outcome. Like, what if she was in last season and she's paired with Fessy, like right now? And then, like, her competition is, I don't know, just people who aren't good. 
Well, the difference is, is last year's female cast was way weaker than this one. This female cast is stacked. Yeah, but if it's the final last season, it would have been not good, though. Who, who, what pair would you have been able to come up with in the final that she would have been able to beat? Okay, I, okay. I, I don't know. I honestly think this is like a giant charade that happens every time she's on the show that she can actually win. Like, I think it would take some really janky carnival game and some large producer manipulation for her to have a chance to win in a final. I mean, look, it's it's a very low odds of happening. There's a reason why she's been able to hang around on seasons but never get the win. But I don't think it's – I actually don't think it's as entirely off the table as other people. I just don't think it's entirely off the table for anyone to win. I just think that there's just weird things that can happen with these finals these days that could lead to somebody winning. I don't agree with you there. I think that a, yeah. Anissa's chance to win a final is so close to zero. I mean, is it a statistical possibility? Sure. It, you know, every female could break their leg through the final and she's able to just walk it. But, you know, and I, I mean this in the nicest possible way to Anissa. Anissa is great at daily challenges and she is sometimes able to do short burst of energy now to win an elimination. She is not physically what we saw in episode one ready to run a 20 mile final. She's just not. Okay, but like, okay, like, let's say we have the final that was last season where it ended up just being one girl versus one girl, and that other girl just is like Nani or somebody and just can't do the puzzle. Wait, what do you mean? I think that she Nani would be even... an hour ahead of Anissa and would time out before Anissa even got to the puzzle. She wouldn't even, she wouldn't even make it to that point. She would have been with Bailey, uh, Melissa, and well, were those ba- the only two that dropped out? Well, ba- so Bailey dropped. Well, they both technically dropped. Melissa dropped as she was about to go into elimination. They both. It, Anissa would have been right with them. I just. I don't think she. I don't know if I buy. It. I just think that there's just weird things that can happen in a final. Like again, I'm not betting on Anissa. I'm not saying so you should even be higher than a hundred to one. I just don't think it's like. So maybe maybe we're saying the same thing. So if she was in a final, what percent chance would you give her to win the final? How many people are in the final? Five. Five, are they in Paris or is it individuals? Individuals. Oh. Three uh, percent. I would say I would give her like eight to ten. All right. So I don't think we're saying anything that different because I was I had five percent in my mind. So really I don't think this is we're that far apart. I think this is the same type of thing that we talked about with Swaggy C last season and how good we thought he was. And really, we were just talking about we thought he was yeah. better or worse than one other player um, that was on the season. So I really think we're probably closer on this than um, we're making it out to be. Um, I did think... Wait, I, I, I'll put Anissa in perspective, and then hopefully we can move on. I, I think that if I am on the challenge, I want to be in an alliance with Anissa in terms of being able to maneuver things politically and if we go to a final together, great, because I have a better and higher percentage chance of winning if I am competing against her. So to me, Anissa is a great person to have on the cast from a personality perspective, but you can also use her effectively politically to get to the end. And then, you know, it also, in my opinion, gives you a better shot to win. So let's let's use Anissa to transition into talking about how the pairs were decided. Yeah, how this bad getting the lead how, here. How bad did you guys feel for Fessy? Extremely. Because you knew that every guy was looking down, praying, please don't pick me at that moment. Yeah, I mean it's it's just I was surprised they just both didn't let like both of them pick their partners. Like, okay, Fessy gets first female pick and Nisa gets first male. Yeah. He wins and he gets screwed over like that. <laughs> I mean right? he won for the win, right? Why, why yeah. does why doesn't he he's at a disadvantage for winning? So do you think if he doesn't win there, do you think Anissa picks him? Like, well, do yeah. they have some great relationship we don't know about, and he just happened to win, and she just happened to win? Well, he, I think Anissa looks at Fessy and says, "This is the best athlete in the house, and that's who I want as my partner because I'm arguably possibly one of the worst athletes in the house." I mean, I'm looking back at it now, and he didn't vote for her in that um, tribunal where uh, Josh and Jenny did. So maybe she there's like some sort of bond there. Um, yeah, I thought it was. It's kind of like when a team gets like the number one seed, but then the number eight seed in the NBA is like a team who had their players get hurt, and then it comes back, and it's like now all of a sudden a team who would be a top three seed. Like what happened with the Trailblazers this year? Who? I also didn't like how they just had everybody kind of pick. 
I kind of like I that. actually really liked that. I, I enjoyed I'll, that. I'll argue for it in that it created political problems right out of the shoot instead of just random numbers. I think it was brilliant to let these people pick their partner and try and figure it out. They created the narrative for the first episode, right? Mm-hmm. Or they, they at least tried to make it seem like that in the sense that Cam seemed like she was very slighted. <laughs> she wanted to be CT's partner. She was standing right in front of CT saying, be my partner. And CT was like, nah, <laughs> I want someone else. And then she I gets- thought that was hilarious. Go ahead. And to me, I can't blame CT for feeling that way because of what he dealt with on War of the Worlds 2. He saw how that alliance, even though they played the perfect political game, it kind of blew up in their face. And I think he just did not want to get attached to Cam's politics. And he wanted to a sure thing, even though it put a target on his back. You know, Ashley is a good partner to have. And if I'm also CT, I don't want to pick some fresh rookie I don't know anything about. So I can understand why CT didn't want to be Cam's partner. Who did Leroy end up getting paired with? Yeah, Casey. Um, that's a good team. A big, yeah, that's a good team. I think the big difference there is like Cam and CT, although they're both good politically, they're very different. Like CT is just, I'm going to sit back and just I sit back as much as I can. I am lounging in the back of the car and you're not even seeing me if you look through the rear window. And Cam is like, every time Cam's, Cam's up to the plate politically, Cam is swinging for the fences. She's mm-hmm. trying to hit home runs every time she gets a shot at it. So I think that may have been part of his motivation for not wanting to be partnered with Cam. They just, mm-hmm. like, like, I think she would be better partnered with like Wes than with C. You know who... I thought was no, I don't most... think that would be a good partnership at all because I think that she and Wes would completely disagree on strategy, and Cam would try to undermine Wes. I don't, I don't think so. I think that they could. I think they would make it work. Who is the so out of the entire pairs that they self-selected? What was the one that had you scratching your head the most? That you thought, are you sure you really want to do that? Um. Because one of the ones that I think of Jay right off the top is kind of weird. Well, I think I know what happened there. The one that, I, and we can talk about that, but the one that I thought of was Tori deciding that she wanted to go with Corey right away. I was like, really? Yeah. That's what you want to do here? You can pretty much pick anyone you want because even CT came running up to her right after yeah. and mm-hmm. after she had already decided that she wanted to be with Corey. Mm hmm. Um, well, so if she doesn't pick Corey. I don't disagree. And there's CTs on the table. Who who should she have picked? Just CT or Wes? Uh, yeah, but her and Wes have always been pretty opposed. Yeah, that, I, that idea I don't of know what they're opposed with. See, see. Um, Go ahead. Like I don't, I don't think Wes would pick Tori. I actually think he should. I think her and Tori, him and Tori, would be a really good partnership. But Politically, it would have been the absolute right decision for Tori because looking at the Big Brother alliance, looking at some of these other alliances, she needs to be paired with someone politically to help navigate those waters. And I mean, I Tori has never come off to me as a great political player. She knows how to do relationships and she's good in challenges, but she's not exactly been shown to be a political player yet, at least on screen. I think she should have picked like yeah, uh, CT. I just, I mean, CT does look like he's in way better shape this season, but he, yeah. he just has a few holes that I think. Leroy. I was, I was, I was thinking Leroy. I think, I, I just think, I think Leroy and Cam are gonna be who's running the ship this season. Well, they definitely um, kind of set that up with the edit that was given. I mean, Cam got a, like, I know you're not a winner's editor person, Debbie. Cam got like a really rounded edit this episode. She gets like the family content. She gets. Well, I mean, it. I'm definitely not a winner's editor for the challenge. Um, no. At all. Uh, I think it's the, still too early to see. Like, I after watching that first episode, I can kind of see where things might be going. The one thing that stood out to me why I'm still putting my money on Darrell winning on the guy side is they kept going back to Darrell. They did it twice in the preview episode, and they did it twice in the actual first episode. He said, you cannot trust these big brother people. They are really good at smiling to your face and then stabbing you in the back when they turn around. He's like, you cannot trust these big brother people. And the fact that Leroy and Cam are connected to the big brother people leads me to believe that it's going to be Darrell and some group kind of go into war with that big brother Leroy Cam alliance. Didn't Leroy say his number one was Darrell? 
Uh, I, I don't remember that. Didn't he may hear have that. Been in how, much you, how much? How much do you wish that MTV didn't give away the entire season and the previews for the season that they show? I mean, that's my thing. Is like a lot of it. I feel don't like show me that. They showed us the entire season. <laughs> they showed us like everyone in it, like the type of elimination that they're going. People who just stop motion these eliminations just figure out who's in each. Yeah. Or to and here's the thing. They ha- they kept showing one trailer with the skydiving. It's very apparent who two of the females are that make the final because they don't do skydiving stuff for a daily challenge like that. Like that was a final thing. And it was like, really, those two, you're really going to give away the two people that are on the female side and at least two people from the female side that are in the final. And for those of you that have not seen it, I won't reveal the names, but it was really frustrating for me to see that. Well, I think that's one of them. I don't, they had a helicopter mission in like the second episode last season. Yeah, but they don't do they they don't they're not going to go. I mean, if they weren't skydiving in to start the season, they're not doing skydiving for a random challenge in the middle of this. That's a beginning of a final or a thing like that. Proven incorrect. Trace, big, Trace, they showed Big T skydiving. So I don't think I thought it's it was someone else. Oh, no, okay. One of them right. was big well, T. you know, that's not far fetched. I don't think Big T is a great political person, but she is what they would call a layup when it comes to physical stuff. And she's also someone that will vote how you want politically. So I could legitimately see her making the final. But the the wrench to that is she's got to win a gold skull. So who is she beating for a skull? She's got to be in a position where like she wins a mission and sees it's like a puzzle or some something that's not about size. That's the elimination. Yeah, I agree. And who's her partner? It's the guy from America's Got Talent. Yeah got talent yeah joseph yeah see that's that's a tough row to hoe there (laughs) (laughs) the Um, fact that during political dealings he's asleep on the couch tells me everything i need to know about how this guy's playing the game well how do you think the pairs are going to come into like play here because people are just going in individually like you think people care a ton if their partner gets thrown in not really. I think it really matters when it comes to kind of your control over the game, right? And whether or not you're able to win a mission, which kind of dictates dictates the power. Rob, mm-hmm. who did you say you thought was a surprising pair? Or Oh, Ter- Teresa and Jay. Let's talk about I, them because we haven't talked about yet. Teresa at all yet. We need to talk about Teresa because, by God, I'm so glad to have her back. I'm very happy to have her back, but she didn't do a lot. Yeah, I mean, she did pretty much nothing. Not she yet. A little bit on the preview episode. Yeah, how, many like, confessionals, how many confessionals did she have this episode, Rob? I had her down for three. Um, I think that's kind of one of those things that no one really wanted to be. She, I think they were part, part, probably part of the group that no one really wanted to be their partners. No one was dying to be one of their partners. And they were at the top of that group, right? They were probably the strongest members of that group of people that were kind of floating around. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm kind of, I, I was, I thought it would have been funny if like Wesley back up with Teresa to avenge their Battle of the X's 2 downfall. And that mm-hmm. was Natalie for Jay, and you just have a survivor's pair. Well, her confessional was about how you sh- Natalie should not have picked Wes, and she understands why you shouldn't pick Wes. Like, she doesn't know what she's getting into. I feel like Teresa wanted no part of Wes. No, see, her intro video was all about wanting to work with Wes. I think that was just the producers feeding her a line. Hmm. Interesting. It's a good perspective. I didn't think about it that way. It could be either one based on the edit we saw. I think... Like, I think... Go ahead. No, I was going to take us in a slightly different direction. Keep going. No, I just think like a lot of those confessionals are just, especially in these first few episodes, are just like you can tell too with a lot of them when they're giving them the like what questions they're giving them. It's not as bad as Survivor where none of those people, like a lot of those people, haven't been on TV before, so they'll give them a lot, and you can just it'll be like, oh, as a brain, it's like, oh, I wonder what question they asked you. But um, with these ones, they're a little bit more tactful, tactful around it. But a lot of times you can just tell, like, all right, you're, you're, their producers are just setting up this this up for them. Are you surprised that Natalie Anderson didn't intro every single uh, dialogue that she had as, as saying, as a Survivor winner, I think. Well, they probably don't want her in a mission. I mean, I guess they're in business with CBS now, so plug Survivor all you want. I mean, total or all access is a big part of their model now. I mean, I'm sure that they're getting a lot of royalties, uh, Buna Murray is, from that relationship. So I would be plugging the hell out of Survivor if they asked us to. Looking at the pairs, one pair that I think is going to be really good that I don't know if I knew that they had any type of relationship. Rob, you probably know better than I, but I think that they are a really good foil for each other are Nicole and Devin. 
yeah, I mentioned that before. They're just really complimentary. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't know how well connected either of them are right now. So they could they could be a team that's like a decent threat in missions, but then also is getting thrown in a lot. And Devin's just, this is a weaker guy's cast, but he still can't physically keep up with a lot of these guys. Yeah, I think the thing that's going to be interesting is him and Wes are super close outside of the show. So I would imagine that they're definitely working together on the season. So it will be interesting to see how Devin reacts to, obviously, the fact that now CT and Wes have big targets. Like, does he need to still continue working with Wes, or is that just going to be their next after they try to weed those guys out? Like he has a relationship with Court with Nelson, so he, but Nelson I think is already like Nelson. Nelson mentioned Wes as his top ally heading into the season, so I think well, Wes says that to everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, Nelson, on the preview episode, or no, on the first episode, he told Natalie that he had an alliance with every guy on the cast, or they think they have an alliance with me on the cast. I honestly couldn't believe that Anissa and Fessy voted for Wes. I I was really caught off guard by it. I just think her and Cam, she and Cam were in such sync, and like you can, what are you gonna do? Put CT and Ashley in, and then just give them a skull. Like you gotta throw, so you gotta throw a haymaker and get somebody decent out if you're already gonna put in CT and Ashley. Yeah, if bananas had been cast on this season, it would have been bananas versus CT. That's what would have happened. Well, it depends who's bananas paired with, too, I guess. But I mean, it's, well, I don't know it's, if they had. No, it would have been bananas. Like they, Cam would have been like, "Get him out of here, goodbye." We're gonna get rid of CT or bananas, and then it would have backfired on him because of the twist that occurred. <laughs> what if bananas appear with like Nani? Wouldn't have mattered. She still would have thrown him in. No, I, th- I think. Um, well, well, we it would. Yeah, I think it would. It would depend on who's the. Who's well, Nani, if you remember back from War of the Worlds two, was not happy with the way that they were playing the politics. I mean, she was the odd person out on that team. Like, I don't think it would be any guarantee that Nani would be um, safe with Cam, like at all. And it is crazy. She and Kyle voted for Ashley and CT. That's the one that really threw me off because I'd like the thing is with that group. Too, I guess Nani and Leroy are pretty good friends, so maybe they're more clued in. But um, well, so who do we think is in like that power group? Is it just sort of the big brother group? Um, it's the big brother yeah. group that includes Leroy and Cam. They're the ones running the game at the moment. So that would make sense. But so how many of them are there? Because there's Josh, Fessy, Casey, Amber B. Um, that's only five. Uh, but then you have to little bit lump in their partners who are Leroy, Cam, Darrell, okay. and. Who else? Um, who's the other one? Anissa. Who's Josh with? I forgot. Josh is Did with you Cam. count Anissa? Yeah, he counted Anissa. But I'm just saying, it's like there's only five pairs, though, is what, is what I'm saying. That's not something. But I'm that's a sure. third of the cast, though. There's 30 of them. I'm curious if that that sort of rookies group then sticks with them because they could swing back the other way and vote with like West CT and like the. Mm-hmm. Maybe pull off, see if you can pull off Nelson and Corey and have them vote with you too. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also interesting now because I know we really haven't discussed it yet, but the elimination we've, we've said it's CT and Ashley and Wes and Natalie get voted in. But when they get to the elimination, TJ throws the bomb and says, this is just a women's elimination day and we'll get back to the guys in a few minutes. So the only elimination that occurred was Natalie versus Ashley one-on-one. It's funny, um, a lot of people are posting, like, they, this was definitely, like, set up to be a guy saying, like, we can't have Wes and CT going against each other in the first episode, so then pivot to it being a female day. I don't think that was it at all. I think that the format of the game was to throw them all off balance and st- start some fireworks, and I, I give, I don't ever normally say this, and so I'm going to say it for the first time, a huge bravo to production on how they structured the game so far. They were able to enable twists, and I know, Rob, you like the cast to have as much information as possible, but from a TV viewer perspective, there are some things you can keep under your hat, and now they know what they're working with going forward, and it was really satisfying to watch Cam mastermind this plan and it go boom in her face, and then them finding out that, okay, whoever won can switch partners. I just assumed that it was going to be female versus female, male versus male based on the format, and it turns out I was wrong. And it's going to be, okay, it's either a female or a male elimination day, and maybe some days it'll be both. But the twist that they can pick any partner other than the double agents is a bomb. Like, that is a huge bomb because you could break up an alliance 
by the the vote. Like, I mean, you could win an elimination and then come back and take a vital person out of a strong team and then pair them with you. And now how does that change the dynamic of the game? Like, it's a huge, huge twist. Because, like, what if Nally comes back and says she wants Leroy or Josh as her partner? Mm-hmm. And then Leroy like, or who? Leroy or Josh, just because they're. Why would she want Josh as a partner? Because of the Big Brother Alliance. Uh, the, the Big Brother Alliance. And I like. I don't know. I think we're kind of overestimating how much your partner's quality is going to come in. Like it's just missions, really. And Josh actually isn't that bad at missions. Great swimmer. Um, so right now that I did it in an extra tab on one of our shared spreadsheets, that alliance has ten people in it. There are 19 people left in the house. So they definitely don't have the Wait, majority. 19 outside of that. Correct. Oh, 19. Like 19 left. Okay, never mind. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I the, so they really do need those those three rookie groups as a vote. Or to just keep Corey, Nelson, and Kyle in line. It's just hard for me to see. Like Those three always typically play pretty passively. But like they have to know they're on the bottom of that group, right? Do you think Tori is part of that group? Well, she's tied to Corey. That's why I was kind of lumping them in for now. Because well, because Corey and Nelson are friends with Fessy. Um, so I put Amber M as part of both Ambers as part of that group, but I don't know if I would put Tori as part of that group. I wouldn't put Amber M or Tori as part of that group. I think they voted with them for this vote because that's where the momentum was going. But I doubt well, they Amber, Amber M is. I, I put Amber M as part of that group because I don't think she knows what's going on and she's probably just going to do whatever Nelson tells her to, to do. Yeah, but what's um, the part of them? To, no, Nelson's part of the Big Brother Alliance. Him and Corey. Why is he part of the Big Brother Alliance? I think he's Because they explicitly said that they were part of the, the Big Brother Alliance. And that they were working with Fessy. They said that yeah. they're like ancillary pieces, though. Like, they didn't mention them as, they, they didn't mention them as like, core pieces. I, and I think they know that. I mean, I think at this point in the game, I think that's de- definitely a relationship that's there. I definitely think that that I, if if they had to pick which side to vote on, they would vote with the Big Brother people. We'll see how long. Yeah, because I, I think that could be more. I, I I just am a little bit more skeptical of that. I just don't think. I mean, they've been played. They've been on this game for so many seasons. They have to realize that, like, look, okay, we'll get Wes and CT out. Great, makes it easier to run the final. Like when we get down to shakes here, we're clearly on the bottom. Yeah, I agree. No, I totally agree. I'm just talking about at this point in time, Fessy said that they were part of the same alliance with them. And then I think Trace mentioned it, and it may have been in the preview episode, Corey said that they were working with Fessy too. So obviously they both have mutually shown some toward, some sort of interest towards each other. How long that lasts? Probably not very long. So again, I think we're we're on the same page. Yep. And that's the thing that kept coming back to me is with Darrell. They kept cutting to Darrell saying, you cannot trust these big brother people. They will stab you in the back. They what? they are only in this for them. So I just think that's like everybody, though, isn't it? Well, it is, but it isn't. Like, that's the thing. Like, he's saying that they are a powerful force in the house. And he's like, they're the threats. Like, if you make a deal with them, you better be ready for them to stab you in the back immediately. It's like having five bananas in the house. <laughs> Um, real quick, do you guys remember the name of the elimination area for this episode or for the season? Uh, for this episode, the for name the of season, the the name of the elimination or like arena where they do the eliminations. The um, oh no, it was like the the not the cave. It was the crater. Yeah, it is the crater. I just completely forgot until I looked at it now. I think that's not bad. It was a good set. I really liked the set a lot. It looked that's really good. Looked, Awesome. The house they made out of the shipping containers was also great because you could tell that they just found a desolate place, hooked up electricity and like built their compound out there. Like they really from like a covid perspective too, it appeared like they did everything they could to keep this cast safe in their bubble and all that kind of stuff. And then I saw a great interview. I heard a podcast with one of the producers who talked through all the stuff they went through protocol wise and stuff like that. Like it's really cool that they were able to pull this off and not have a single COVID issue the whole time they were there. That's just such an achievement for the show. Um, one thing, though, too, we should mention with Tori, Devin, is she is really good friends with Anissa. Um, and Teresa's mm-hmm. really good friends with Anissa as well. So maybe that's sort of how, how they get clued in. I'm curious then where, like, if that group does end up kind of just weeding out everybody else, where then the split comes beyond that. 
we there so i have it if you go to the <clears throat> draft spreadsheet that we have i made a third tab where i'm kind of sorting out kind of what it looks like for who's on which side so do you not think that Teresa would be on the side with ct wes natalie etc because of her partnership with jay and i think jay said that wes is his number one correct did Jay say that? I mentioned. I know he. I mentioned think four it. different people said that Wes was their number one. Yeah, <laughs> not enough apparently. Um, um, so is this on the left? Is this one alliance, and on the right is the other alliance? Yeah, and then the people at the top. I'm just. It just well, Ashley's out. So she's yeah. Not. That's why I put her way off to the right. So Ashley's out. We have no idea. Can you see when I highlight stuff like this or no? Yeah, I can see where you are. You're the blue square for me, so I can see you. So. We have no idea, I feel like, at least politically, where Lolo and Nam lie. I think they're in an excellent spot in the game right now. I they're think the they're swing sitting votes. pretty. Ooh, well, um... They're also arguably the most athletic team. I mean, my gosh, like, Lolo is a beast. When she I think they... sprinted up that thing, I was like, wow, that's yeah, incredible. Devin had a really good quote where when the female elition, or female part of the uh, challenge started, he said, what did he say? He's like, Lolo Jones just broke the sound barrier. Yeah. Like, I mean, she was three body lengths ahead of everybody going up that hill. Because in addition to being just an incredible athlete, she's also tall. So her stride was incredible. And then knowing that Nam is a ninja warrior, you know that he has agility. And agility is a huge part of this physical part of the game. I was curious. I think didn't get fought too. Well, so my thing is... I'm just curious how, like, do you think that, like, Wes and Joe just didn't want to have to work with Lolo, so they didn't want to be fair with Lolo? Wes and who? Wes and Darrell, because they were with her on Chance versus Pros and know she's, like, a maniac. Well, I think that's that possible. Wes, that's very possible. I But Wes did say there was, they planted several seeds with little comments, and it was such a great production decision, because now I'm anxious to see where this is going to go. Wes specifically addressed Lolo and said the entire cast has no idea what she is capable of. And I think that they are setting up for the fact that she's going to be a great competitor, but she's going to go off like a bomb at some point in an argument because Wes planted that seed. I think she's just going to, I think they're in a decent spot, Devin, but I think they're also like, I think they've got blaring sirens as a target because they're not very connected and they're clearly super athletic. And like, if you're in the winner's spot, you can like find an elimination where they their athleticism isn't as huge a factor, and just throw them in. I mean, I personally think that the way you beat Lolo and Nam is to just try to keep them out of elimination. Like, period. Don't even give them an opportunity to get a skull. Yeah, because they're gonna go and get a skull, and then when it gets to the are you gonna take it from them? Yeah, then when it gets to the point in the game when people need to go in to get skulls, no one's gonna want to go in against them. Okay, but you can see the elimination if you're in the winner spot as you're there. You can see an elimination that's not super athletic. Yeah, but so, so what what elimination would you design where they wouldn't be the favorite? Because Nam even said that he's great at puzzles. Well, everybody says they're great at puzzles. Hunter I don't said know about that. I think people openly admit all the time that they're not Hunter good at puzzles. Elimination says he's good at puzzles. Who? Hunter, like Hunter from Are You the One, that's good at everything besides puzzles. Okay. Said he's good at puzzles showing up on invasion. I think everybody says they're good at puzzles, and then they get in one of these, and then they realize their puzzle capable capabilities are more in question. I don't know. I disagree. I I think that if they were competing as pairs in eliminations, I think they would be by far the favorite over any other pair. I, I don't know about by I far. Agree. I think they would be the favorite, though. I would agree. I think the only thing that breaks this up is the uncertainty now of are both people actually going to elimination if we vote them in because no in the challenge they could be like oh well we just had a female elimination day this must be a male elimination day so let's target x and then they show up and flip the script on them again so like so much i think that there 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 is a lot of variables here now that the cast has to play around with in terms of okay i have to go in and get a skull at some point but if I am the cast, at no point do I vote Lolo and Nam into elimination. Like, I'm not going to put them in as the house vote and give them a free opportunity at a skull. Sure, but the only way you throw them in is the way Rob said, is if you can see the elimination and go, okay, this is just a puzzle. This is might be our only shot. We're throwing them in. But it's also like, 
if they're that good of a team, they're probably going to win a mission at some point and just let themselves put themselves in. Like, I think that the freeze-out strategy is a lot easier said than done. Because, like, anybody you're trying to freeze out is probably going to win a mission at some point. Yep. That's your point, too. That, no, that's why this is going to be such an unpredictable game. Like, I really... I'm really interested to see how all of this plays out. And I also, I know they left episode one with a cliffhanger where we don't know exactly what Natalie is going to do in terms of the partner thing. And it, it looks like either CT or Wes or whoever is left out in the cold here, they're not going to go home that I think I remember vaguely reading in an interview, they mentioned something about rogue agents. I think if you get to a point in the game where you're partnerless there's another twist for what the rogue agent's power in the game can be to make up for the fact that they don't have a partner. Well, one, one thing I'm curious about is, so, like, let's say Natalie decides to steal Josh, for like what we were talking about earlier. So then Cam is free. Does Cam just pick one of CT or Wes, or are all three of them, yeah. like, individuals now? I'm, I would be curious how that part of it plays out. I don't think there is... I think she's pretty much a lock to stay with Wes. I think she's going to stay with Wes, too. She's I like, think so, too. So, all right, let's keep let's keep going down this these pairs. So, what do you think? Where do you think Kyle and Nani are in all of this? In the middle, between the two sides, I they're think, right in the middle. I think that they're just they're in the middle competitively. They're in the middle politically. I think they'll probably make it a decent way and then get eliminated. I mean, Kyle's made a few finals. Maybe they they sneak it away. In. I just I, think he's really not as connected this season either, though. Too. Mm-mm. I would have said Kyle's strongest connection would have been a bananas or a CT if they're there. And the fact that bananas wasn't there is strike one. And then the fact that CT has a huge target on his back is strike two. And Kyle's MO these last few seasons has been to try to stay as under the radar and play the CT game as possible. And I think that it's going to kind of turn out exactly like it did in total madness for him. He's going to get to the end and he might get a skull. He might not like there's, I just think that is the game that he plays and he's going to, change the vote in the alliance depending on the situation each time because even the rest of the cast was calling him a snake you know and even Corey and nelson who they, they seem to be maybe friendly and working with are like look at you you've got all these tattoos you're looking like a snake running around it's like yeah they they know what his game is well i think most of these cast is like 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 we already was at ct's wedding like they're not not friends it's just i think that they're so almost so seasoned at this point they just are like dude we're playing a game like we'll leverage mm-hmm. when we when it's a benefit, but there's some times where you know it, it meets brass tacks. Um, I want to think three... that is like, just real quickly. So with the skull is my big issue with, with them last season for the most part was just so everybody's so passive, like just letting people get skulls. There was very little question. It does seem like people are going to be like a little bit more cutthroat this time around, and I think just the cast makeup leads to that more so, which should be good. Mm-hmm. The three all Ricky. Pairs being Liv and Michi, Gabby and Leo, and then Big T and Joseph. I have no idea where any of them are and where their allegiance is lie. She is not an all rookie pair. Who? Oh, Big T. Well, it might as well in, be in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she made a mark last season, at least. Um, well, that's the thing. Like, do you think they'll just get targeted? Well, I. I think that they're still on the bottom rung for what pe- there's the teams at least that people would want to go into to get their skulls against. So like the team wins and then they have enough connections where they can just set up who's going in. Maybe somebody wins and is like, look, I'll, I'll, let, give me America's Got Talent dude in the elimination. Yeah, that's the thing. If I'm Wes and I win a daily, I'm trying to manipulate the house vote to get them thrown in because that's who I want to go against is the America's Got Talent guy. What would you do I, if you if I'm one of the Leo we- weaker teams, if I'm Leo, uh, if I am Leo. <sighs> if I'm Leo, I just don't want Hall Brawl. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like politically, like you just keep yeah between these two factions or do you tell his best bet is to stay under the radar and go with the flow of the majority until they have an opportunity to make a move. And that would be as if they can win a daily, if they can, um, you know, somehow manipulate the house vote a little bit, if they have like a, a favorable pair that might throw themselves in, like that's their move because they're not going to sway a vote. 
Yeah, but you can't just sit back, though. If you just go with the flow, the flow usually is rookies are in early and in often. But that doesn't appear to be the script this season. Well, yeah, but- I don't know. Oh. I don't think it's going to stay that way. So if if I'm Leo, I go with the Big Brother um, alliance, see if they can continue to knock off CT, West, Natalie, everyone on that side of the group, and then see if I can make a, a big move at some point. You know what I mean? He's not you know a good I actually, <laughs> like, I actually disagree with that uh, idea because of the what they're planting the seeds on for Big Brother. If I am Leo, from our standpoint as a viewer... I am buddying up with Tori so that you're in the Nelson Corey area, which is still going to be against CT and Wes, and it accomplishes the same thing. But at least with Corey and Nelson, you're going to know where you stand. The big brother people sure. that I would not want to be aligned with Cam unless I'm in her top three. If you're not in Cam's top three, I think at any point she's going to screw you. So when when I say the big brother group, I'm, I'm including Corey and Nelson in that. So that's kind of okay. like the, the sub faction of the, the Corey and uh, of the big brother group. I don't, I don't think that partnership's lasting for a long time. I, I think even within like the next episode, we could see a Fisher there. I mean, they played with each other throughout the like all of last season too. They played with Fessy, hit them and Corey, them and Josh weren't aligned at all. They, they weren't like yeah, Josh was with bananas. Like he, they were aligned with Fessy, but that's one person like in the group. And I, I think Cam is running the show for that Big Brother Alliance. I mean, it was obvious that that's who they're building at least this first episode around in terms of the politics. So. I mean, if I'm Leo, your best bet, I mean, I don't think that Corey and Nelson, I don't think, I, I just don't buy that Cam's got a spot for them in that little alliance they have. I think they're there for now, but they're not the core part of the alliance. So I'm I'm with you that I think Leo's best bet is to join it, but he needs to strengthen the ties with Corey and Nelson and Tori more than anybody. So I think, I think Fessy was much more involved in what was going on this episode than the editors led us to believe. And I think that's largely because they wanted him throwing in West to come off with a bang. Sorry, go mm-hmm. ahead. I feel like Anissa made that decision more than him. Maybe you're right, and then, then he was more involved in that decision-making process. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess you guys, if, the, if you're Leo, you can try, obviously you round together Michi and jo- Joseph and like the rest of those rookies, so you just have some Good sort of- luck with that. Has that ever been successfully done? <laughs> well, but I'm, you at least need the three of the, your three pairs to vote together. Like that, you have to have that at least. I'm not saying that that's enough, obviously, but you at least need to have the three of yeah. you. Guys. But like, if you like West and CT, I think, I mean, they'll probably be okay. But where where are they going to go from here? Like, if you're West, what's your next move? Uh, I you, you got to get the rookies together. <laughs> yeah, the rookies. So if I'm West, that's exactly what I do. That's what I'm saying. I think that's a natural pairing. Is if you take those three and then you link up with West, CT, Devin, Nicole, uh, like the, that group. Then you have six, yeah. like six pairs. I'm saying so that's like twelve people. And then you need find like if you can just somehow bait Corey and Nelson over to your side for a vote and say, look, we won't throw in Fessy or Josh or something. Like we won't throw in somebody you're super connected with. Mm-hmm. Find let's find somebody else we can mutually agree upon. So we're not we're not just swept under the the Cam Anissa Big Brother rug. Yeah. yeah, so the because the, I, I think sorry, go ahead, Devin. The three rookie pairs, and then what we assume would be the West and CT faction that comes out to 13 people. The Big Brother faction is 11, and then we have the floaters. Kyle I, and I think Nani. that, yeah, Kyle, Nani, oh, Lolo, Nan, and Nani. Lolo, and Tori. So that, that's actually a fourth rookie pair if you wanted to group them in. And I mean, Lolo and Wes have at least been on a show together and seem to have an amenable relationship on that show. But let's also not toss this aside. We did, we have not yet talked about the voting structure here yet. So first of all, thank God there's no Troika, Triad, any of that crap anymore. That's gone. It, should at least it is a... Thank God. I, all of those things were so formulaic and formalities. Like, did, did anything ever interesting come out of those? And see, no. Like, the time they had those, it was like, oh, let's show off the stylish, like, you know, James Bond-esque action shots we could pull off. And then that would be fun for an episode or two. And then after that, it's like, look, we're spending eight minutes on absolutely nothing. Yep. And so I really appreciate the fact that it is a full house vote, but I also love that it's a cutthroat style secret vote. Mm-hmm. And the partners don't have to vote the same way. So you could have two people that get partnered up throughout this game that are playing completely different alliances and it could really screw up some votes down the road. And so um, we can't always assume that every partners are going to vote the same way. It didn't happen last night. I think big T was one of the people that did not vote for um, Wes and Ashley, but her partner did. 
Yeah, that, okay. That's... Let's do our winner picks for male and female. We're going to keep this going like we did last year. Because it's really an open question. Like, do you think, because like it could finish where you and your pair are running the final together. It could not It could not be in just individuals. Maybe they like do a free agent style where you switch around every time. Um, let's assume that, let's just pick one male and one female because at the same time, they could just switch at any given time too. I think, so I it's, think it's going to be an every person for themselves final kind of thing. And there's going to be one male and one female winner, but these partners thing, like you said, it's going to be fluid. So I'm with you. I think we just pick one male, one female because it's going to be extremely fluid. Well, I'd like, like, so I'm, I, Cam is the person I feel most confident in winning. Like I have, I would have her and then a tier and then all pick up the the next ones after that so let's just do what we did last time top three men in order top three females in order and that and then we can update these weekly as we did last year okay all right who's up first i'll go okay so females i think right now the way it stands based on what we saw you have to put Cam as number one, just based on what we've seen so far. I will probably change my mind in three weeks, but that's who it looks like so far. Number two, I would put uh, Lolo. And number three, this is where it starts to drop off a cliff, not because it's not competitive, but it's just harder to gauge the politics. I I don't think Tori is in a good spot long-term in this game, so it's hard to put her three. I'll put Nani three because I feel like she could float to the end. And then, so that would be Cam, Lolo, Nani. And then on the male side, I would go Darrell, Bessie. And I'll say it, uh, Nelson. See, I think a better way to structure this is for us to just pick the four people we feel most confident in winning. No. No. You know what? Forget that. Number three. And, there's, there's going to be a male and female winner. Yeah, I understand, but if it's just Cam tied to somebody else, like my male winner pick is wrong because I feel most confident in Cam winning. But I don't think that's the way that's going to go. Um, I'm going to change my three. Um, so I would go Darrell, Fessy, CT. I think CT is going to be fine. Because I don't think I, – I think at the end of the day, the final is going to be a free-for-all. So if you do think that they'll keep the pairs throughout – the course of the season that's definitely something that you would weigh into whether or not you think that they would get to the end but not necessarily who would be the winner i don't i think that's super presumptive to assume that the pairs aren't going to be running the final together okay how, well, you then, right now? how much you want to bet let's bet five bucks fine ten bucks i guess yeah i think it's in every person or they'll rotate partners i mean i think the final is going to be structured like total madness that's how they're going to structure the final but they're just going to use this pairs to get to that point and with the fluidity of the pairs with what looks like there might be some rogue agents running around we really don't know how this is eventually all going to play out once we get towards the end so um to me it's you use your criteria i'm going to make the assumption it's an every person for themselves kind of final so I'm going to say uh, Darrell, Fessy, CT for the men. And I'm going to say right now, Cam, uh, Lolo, and um, who did I say for my third, Devin? Did you write it down? Yeah, I wrote it down. It is Cam, Lolo, and Nani. Um, yep. So what, what is what is this bet? The bet is that the... Final that versus... it's a pairs final versus a free-for-all final. Well, I think there, there can be pairs at certain points throughout the final. I don't think the partners that they go into the final with, I, I don't think two people, I don't think people will win the final as a group. I That's agree. What, significant enough probability where, like, I, I just am saying, I feel most confident in Cam winning. And like, if I have Cam as my female winner pick and then my male winner pick, it's just not the person Cam is paired with. Like, I don't have as much yeah, but you, don't know who, you don't know who she's going to be paired with though. That's what I'm saying. So I wanted to just have her as my pick, whoever she's paired with. That's who I would pick as my winner. Yeah, but I think we're arguing the same week. thing in a different way. <laughs> I like. I really don't. I, I really don't think pairs are really going to come into into play that much this season because it's not like you're tied to whether or not you go home with that person. Sure, but then they wouldn't put any stake into like switching pairs around if pairs didn't come into play at all. Yeah, I know they do come into play. They come into the play in the sense that you can switch around, but that you're still by yourself in this game, pretty much. Uh, well, I, I guess we'll see. Um, I, I just I feel most, so. Cam would be my number one for the woman. I guess I would have Natalie number two. Um, 
And number three, I don't really have a strong pick for number three, honestly. I, I feel pretty good about those two. Um, I can see Amber B actually making a run here now. I'll put Teresa as number three for now, but Amber B is pretty close. Jesus. Uh, and then what about the male side? Yeah, the men I just don't have as much of a take on. We'll go. Um, I'll put Leroy number one for now. And then I'll go Darrell two and CT three. All right. So for the females, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Lolo. I'm going to go. Uh, do I want her first? Yeah, sure. I'm going to go Lolo. I'm going to go Casey. And I'm going to go. I want to put Natalie or Cam. And I will go with. I'll come back to that. For the men, I'm going to go. Both of you like Darrell, huh? I just think he's going to be hard to beat in elimination. He might get thrown in multiple times, but it's just hard for me to see, other than Fessy, anyone on that male cast being able to beat him heads up in most anything. I just thought unless the, it's a puzzle. And to be honest, like I think Leroy's in a really good spot, and then I think CT will just kind of make it work, and he can just come in a better shape. Um, so it's real. That again, it's more just like I don't have as much of an opinion. I just would have those three, and like then like Wes or Nelson, like his other people who are kind of factoring in. I'm gonna go non. I'm gonna go Fessy, and non I'm gonna go. One? Yeah. Wow, that's a bold take, sir. Dude, what was the last time you had two rookies like that just come in and win? Uh, I guess Turbo, but that was when half the cast was rookies. And I'm gonna go. Do I want to go to Rel? I don't. I don't know. I really don't have like a strong take. Of, uh, screw it. Let's go to Rel. Yeah, because I was about he, to say, if you had picked yeah. Joseph, I would have laughed uproariously. And then I'm going to go with, I'll go with Cam for my third woman. All right, to recap, I have Lolo, Casey, Cam for the women. Males, Nam, Fessy, Darrell. Trace has Cam, Lolo, Nani. Darrell, Fessy, CT. Rob has Cam, Natalie, Teresa. Leroy, Darrell, CT. Let it know that I reject the entire premise of what we're doing. I don't get why. why <laughs> Duly why? noted. I just think it makes a lot more sense if we structure it where we have because, like, who do you feel most confident in winning? That person, regardless of female or male, that's number one. Then number two, then number three. So you know that that person's going to win. <clears throat> why would you do that if we know that there's going to be a male and female winner? We even know that there's going to be Rob. They're not going to do that. Like well, that's every, everything that they're. That, they that's how they like this is 2020 they want they're from a like production and optics and marketing perspective they have to have a, a female winner I, I suppose but like i mean they had it was two seasons ago they didn't do that yes that was that was before everything that's gone on in the last x number of months I agree with you completely. They're not going to have just a single winner. And with the stacked physical cast they have, it's borderline unfair for the females to have to compete against the males in a final that Justin Booth is going to structure. It was unfair on World of the Worlds 1. I, I sure. I, I just think that, like, I've... But it's also, like, for one, it could be pairs running the finals together. And in that case, like, then if your male and female winner picks are on different pairs, then what are you going to do? I don't, I don't think that at all. Just from yeah, the I, name of the game with double agents and all that kind of stuff, I just don't see that happening. I could be wrong, but the fact that the pairs are going to change every week, like every week there might be a pair change. Like it's just, it's it's hard for me to believe that they're not, even if they run the final in pairs, they might run segments of the finals in pairs with different people. And then at the end of it, it's a, single winner on both sides because they're splitting a million bucks and they're going to give half a million to one person and half a million to another person. And that's it. 
That's what they did last year, and I fully believe that's what they're going to do this year. Accurate reflection of our opinion. Like I said, so like Trey seems like he's most confident in Darrell winning. I'm most confident in Cam winning. Devin, you seem most confident in, in what would you say, Lolo winning? Uh. I, I think if Lolo makes the final, it's extremely difficult to not place her as the favorite in the final. I think my problem is, is even though I've put her as my second, it's hard for me to see how she's going to handle this politically after 10 weeks because she blew up on the other show. And that was only like a three week show versus a 10 week show. I just don't know that she's going to stick through this politically well. Well, so what I'm saying is, so as it's listed right now, Devin, it looks like Trace and I have the same exact opinion on Cam. It looks like there's only one degree of difference between Trace's opinion on Lolo and your opinion on Lolo, which that's not the case by how we're talking. Uh, for what? For a while, we're for an accurate reflection of our opinion. Like, Trace and I, I, I clearly feel more confident in Cam winning than Trace does, I would say. And then we, like, there's not a much larger than one degree of difference on our opinions of Darrell and your opinion on Lolo and his opinion on Lolo. So just having it just do one, two, three is not an accurate reflection of how we feel. Uh, I think we're just arguing know, because, over something. That's, no, because you know. it, at that point, <clears throat> like, I, I think that's the whole point of this. Like, we're picking the people who we think are going to win and there's been one episode i don't think we're going to have like huge like swings and differences in how we feel about people i mean i would if you gave me like cam versus the field i would think about it how much you want for viewers right now i think i would think of give me a lot that she's not going to win dude i honestly don't i'm not i'm taking her out right now i don't think she's gonna win I don't in... think she is either, but for right now, she's number one based on the edit, and that's what we have to go off of and our instinct. And right now, the edit shows her as the power player or the power broker. And so until her power broken gets thrown off somewhere, which it kind of did at the end of the first episode, her plan blew up in her face, which happened previous seasons it's too. Like female Elimination Day, she got the what girl who's won twice out. Like, I don't think that's her plan blew up in her face is entirely accurate. Well, her plan really was not so much Ashley, but CT. She was pissed at CT, and she purposely did that because of CT. And I think that now that CT's back, if CT gets put in the double agent position, he's going to do what he can to get rid of Cam. Let's talk about this. What do we think? What do we think the double agent position will, will entail? Let's speculate. I think you just get a pick who goes in, and you can throw yourself in, and then you see the votes. I don't, hopefully, it doesn't extend beyond that. You get a what? Say that again. Well, you- I am more interested. And then you're going to put the people in, and then you're immune if you want to be. So I think that's what um, it amounts to. I, I don't think it would extend beyond that to you. Well, I – so – For the they, double agent, no. I think the bigger question is what the rogue agent, if that's what they call it, is going oh, to be okay. able to do so because they have to have some kind of power. I didn't know how they were labeling this. So the double agent is are the are the two people who win the mission, and then the rogue agent is the person who is left without a partner at the end of the episode. So what what do we I'm calling it the rogue agent for now. That might not be the real term. I just vaguely remember hearing about that somewhere in a preview that there's rogue agents and stuff like that. So they might call it something else, but that's my speculation. Okay, so what do we think will happen with CT? That, that that's that's what I I think he turns around and then the girl that wins the elimination can pick can either take CT or take somebody else. And then that's the one thing I'm really curious about is if like if Nally chooses to steal somebody, then what happens? Like does that person still immediately get paired with Wes or CT or just what happens from there? That's that's the one thing I'm really curious about. I really I really have no idea. I don't, I don't either. They, I think they would be forced to pick between Wes and CT. I don't think that they would want to completely reshuffle the pairs after the first episode. I think that would be something that we would be curious to see. I think that from the perspective of a producer, that would be too difficult for an average viewer to be able to handle. Yeah, yeah there would be a lot to keep track of. I, I think um, yeah, I think that they probably just get a pick between the two, which one they want. And then whichever one they don't pick. One thing that will be interesting too then is if they keep, if they don't like, all, if, they, if they keep doing female, male, female, male, female, male, like the men are always going to be the one who's left um, in the cold. There's always going to be one guy who doesn't have a partner, whereas the females are always going to have a partner. Maybe. We don't know yet. I think it's too early to tell. I mean, if it was me, the power you give the rogue agent is that they get to join whoever the double agents are after the next daily, and they're part of the voting block for the winners. I think that makes a lot of sense to me, because then they can take the opportunity to go get a skull 
And it means that we're going to have a hybrid game where some people might have partners and some people don't. And the strategy will have to evolve throughout the season. So I think they have left the door open for a lot of possibilities. That really is incentivizes you to get your partner to throw it in, though, which would be, I think, could be not what they want. All right. So let's do we'll, – we'll just do this real quick then, too. So overall, top, top three people that you think will win. Cam, one. I would have Natalie, two. And then I'll have Leroy, three. You're really going all in on this first episode edit stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I I think Darrell won for sure. So like last season, Johnny is on the face of all of if you go look back on it, he's on the face of the poster. Jenny's on the poster next to him. He's Johnny though. I understand, but he's also all over the previews and stuff. I there there's Cam has been the person from my perspective they've really been promoting as like she's getting like the voiceovers in the trailers. She's got very present through all the promotional material. And it has like a super rounded edit this episode where you get background information on her family. She's clearly put herself in a power position. I also just think she's very good and this is a format that seems like it really suits her strengths. So I would I would feel confident with her as my number one for now. Until the challenge shows me that they're going to start editing in a manner more similar to Survivor, I'm not going to play it. Trace, you're up. Yeah, I, I think I'm most confident in Darrell just because of what I've seen and the things that they did for him. Um, because Wes and CT are there, as long as they're there, they're going to get their screen time. And so I don't feel as confident Wes is going to make the final again this year. There's just I feel like this game is going to be too stacked against Good him. Episode for him. Yeah, I just think that this is going to be... I think Wes actually has a bigger target on his back than CT does, where, even though the first episode really was all about Cam's revenge on CT not picking her as a partner. Um, but I think Darrell, I feel the most confident in overall. I think I would have to put Cam second just because of what we've seen, but I really think that as the season goes on, I'm going to fall off a of Team Cam. I just Until she proves she can actually get to a final and win it, it's extremely difficult for me to actually put all my money on her. But based on the edit, that's what we've seen so far. You know who had done that's out. Say what? Well, there's nobody who's done. I, I understand like she hasn't won one yet, but no, now there's anybody else who's left. So now she was I just feel like there's other people that are more athletic than her. Not to say that she's not athletic. Um, it's just hard for me to envision right now who the final females will be in the final. Like it's just there's a lot still to go. We have 19 episodes. I mean, I'm going to assume two of those 19 are reunions, but if we're going to say that there's 17 total episodes, there's a lot of game to play still. So it's just based on what we know right now, I say cam, but overall, I don't think I'm going to feel that good about it in a few weeks. Number three. Uh, number three, shoot. Uh, CT, I guess, even though I put Fessy above them, I just feel like CT just finds a way. All right, I'm going to go Nam, Lolo, and Casey. Number one. Wow. Dude, no one's going to want to go in against him. No one. I mean, Pat so points he... the show with him. A lot of times when you see these, like, DK Metcalf body types, like, it doesn't always work out. Rob, this is different. The, 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 this is, I know what you're saying, but this is not it. He came from a show where... The, the entire premise of the show is doing challenge competitions. No, I, I understand. I'm more on the page with you. I, I don't tail that, especially with him. Um, and the number one is just aggressive. Like who? Who? I don't know, dude. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying this edit whatsoever. Like the, and the the challenge does this every season. This is one episode. I'm the. I, I honestly think now more that I think about it, I think I have him almost in his own tier, and then Lolo. I honestly would almost even say Casey over Lolo. I think Casey is in a really good spot right now. Yes, she is in a great spot. I agree with you. I just have a hard time seeing her winning, winning for some reason. It's not... I, I, I think she has an exceptional chance to get to the final, though. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I definitely see her make. I think making the final is a different question for. But I, I definitely see can see her in, in making the final. Especially just, with there's if there's five spots... You know, and let's say you throw the partners out the window and you say, who are the five females most likely to get a skull and make the final? She's one of those five. Yeah, that was the reason why I had picked her in our draft. The fantasy I, draft, yeah. Yeah, I think she's just a shoe in to be in the final. I think she's a, a, a great challenge player. What were the, Rob, um, 
what were the fantasy th- scores for this week? Just overall, like give us a top line on who were the the high scorers. I need to ru- I need to go back and um, run some numbers on a few of the politics points. But the leader, as it stands right now, was CT at eighty three. Um, Anissa was second at seventy one. Uh, Cam was third at 58. Fessy was fourth. Surprising that Cam was third. Really? I mean, she was all over. I honestly expected her to be first. Yeah, that's the what way I mean. They I would have expected her to be number one. You, you get a lot of points for winning the mission. And she was, like, she was really uh, pressed. But she wasn't, like, fighting with people a ton. Like, CT actually got into a few verbal altercations. And then who was after that? Uh, after Cam, uh, Fessy was four. Then Natalie was five at 46. And then after that, there's just a bunch of people bunched together. Gotcha. That's good. Well, cool. Do we want to, um, before we uh, end this particular episode, do we want to talk through where people are consuming this show now? Um, we did a test show that probably not see the light of day to test some new software, which is why we sound so much better on this episode than we ever have. Um, but there's some things we announced at the end of that episode that, um, probably won't see the light of day. So Rob, why don't you explain uh, where people are hearing the show? I think we will. It's just going to take some effort. (laughs) It was interesting. Um, Well, I mean, they're they're probably watching us on it right now, but yeah, we are now uh, being broadcast on Mayo Media Network, the YouTube patch Mayo's YouTube channel. Um, So yeah, you can, you can find us there if you want to see us on video format. We're not actually appearing in a video. It's just a phone board, but. Maybe down the road you'll see us in full video format, but we just did not have the time to get all that together. So um, we're excited to be a part of the Mayo Media Network. You can still get this audio-wise on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you consume your podcast, and you can still get it straight from the challengechronicles.podbean.com if that's the way you want to float your boat. So um, thanks to Pat Mayo and uh, including us as part of his uh, challenge block of programming on YouTube. Yeah, after Joe Rogan... Spotify, I'm sure this is the, the biggest news in the podcast movement industry. <laughs> and you can still right there just, with the ringer being there. <laughs> you can still just get it from our YouTube channel too, which is just the Challenge Chronicles, right? Yeah, that one's a little harder for us because sometimes we have to post it separately, but uh, it will eventually get on our YouTube channel. But for now, if you want to guarantee a place on YouTube, uh, uh, go check out the Mayo Media Network and you will definitely uh, have the show on YouTube as soon as we can drop it through that network. We have a couple listener emails. Should we just do those next time? Uh, if I've got 10 minutes. So if we can right, wrap this up in 10 through. minutes, let's do it. Let's just do these listener emails and then we'll call it quits. All right. So Beck emails us and he says, hey, guys, I want to ask your opinions on whether the champs for a season should get count towards elimination wins and overall wins. In my opinion, I think they should, because, for example, Darrell's win on champs for pros to me is much more impressive than his wins on the Gauntlet Inferno. Whoa. So weird that those wins are valued higher. I get that. Chase. It was for charity, but the overall competition of those seasons were similar to the quote unquote real challenges taking place at the same time i also believe that seasons one through four should not be counted as challenge wins and if someone's win on battle the seasons one or the gauntlet count so should the champs verse dot wins I look forward to hearing your thoughts all the best back i don't it's a really bold take I, I honestly really you think it's that bold i've never even seen I, those seasons and i don't think it's that bold I think the Champs versus season is significantly higher difficulty than those earlier seasons. Yeah, I agree. And, and I haven't even seen them. <laughs> <laughs> and also from just a, a numerical perspective, only two of them won compared to like the Gondola when you're half the cast. Why do you That's think it's fair. such a hot take? I just, it's so weird because I feel like Bunim and Murray, and maybe this is me trying to give them the producers too much credit. They go back and forth so often on whether those count or not. Like, they had a champ season where Tony was on it and Tony's only ever made a final. He's never won. Different. And so it, it's kind of hard for me to count the champs because they had people on those shows that weren't champs. But I think that's a different question entirely. Like I think, what, uh, cause like, I mean, like people win against non-champs all the time. So I, I think that's a different question. I, mean, I think it's a hard thing for me to parse through because I think it's more impressive, but I think it should almost just be counted separately. Like, it's still a worthy indicator of their performance, but mm-hmm. not a regular season of the show. So I would still use it to, like, evaluate how good they are. 
But I wouldn't yes. with the other statistics. That is a the that you put into words exactly what I was feeling is it's a spinoff show and it should still count as important, but it's hard for me to count it as an actual like based on the show, the real world road rules challenge as it has evolved into just the challenge. It is extremely difficult for me to count it as a win in that vein because it's a shorter season, a lot of stuff like that. The one take that he had about you should, you know, if we're going to count those first four seasons, well, let's actually wind the clock back a little further. The only season of the real world road rules challenge that I say shouldn't be counted is real world all star or road rules all stars, which was the real world cast. All they did was a bunch of missions and they weren't competing against each other. They were just a team doing missions and it was basically a glorified road rules season. So to me, that's the only season of the challenge that you should discount because no one really won that they just kind of finished the show like if we're gonna go down that, just go ahead i think when eliminations come into play that's when the show really starts to become what it is mm-hmm. before then it's just so you, different so you would argue that maybe up through sex is one it's not until you get to the gauntlet one that maybe the wins become more impressive because before that it was just Teams of six competing, and then it was Battle of the Seasons, which was a glorified well, survivor at least, vote. At least Battle of the Seasons, people went home, right? I, th- I think, well, I don't know. But I mean, people went home and sex is one, too. I, I would need to think about it a little bit more. Go ahead, though, Rob. That's a great question, Beck. I think we're going to put a pin in it and think about it some more. But that is a great question. I think it's even maybe worthy of a, a spinoff 20-minute podcast. That's a great question. For me, it's a pretty open and shut case, though. Like, I think it's just... That's part of the show, but we just have to individually evaluate how impressive each of those achievements are. Like, I think, like, like Jay, like, are we going to take Jay and Natalie's survivor statistics and add them in with their challenge statistics? No. But a lot of the stuff they did on Survivor is a lot more impressive than stuff people did back in the first four seasons or even in recent seasons of the challenge. So I think you just have to. Yeah, you're not wrong. They don't count as part of their official statistics, but I think they're certainly worthy indicators of how good they are. All right. Sharice message, messages us and says, uh, and this is inside baseball for all the people that this is your first time listening to the show that have found us. Um, so Rob can explain after, but Sheree says friends is really not that good. Thanks. Thanks for saying that on the podcast. I would find the office funny if it didn't hit so close to home. Thanks for the Island recap fellas exclamation mark. Uh, and this is just from, Rob calling out friends and saying that it, I don't even remember what you said to you. I said, it's not that good. It's like a C plus. It is. Like, I don't think it's good either. Um, like, friends is just like, I just don't find, I literally, so I had like a streak, like late, late high school, early college where I went back I watched a lot of TV dramas, but then also a few sitcoms I just hadn't seen before. So I started watching friends and like, I always kind of give the first season or two of a show, you know, the break, like, okay, they're just finding their footing. Um, they're trying to short like Parks and Recreation, for example, has a horrific first two seasons. Then it's quite good after that. Um, but like, yeah, I got into like season three or season four. I'm like, dude, I've laughed like four times what the entire time I've been watching the show, and it's supposed to be funny. Like, what? what, what are yeah. we doing? I think the problem for you and Friends, and I'm not a huge Friends fan. My wife loves it, but Friends is the culmination of Generation X. Like that is the Gen X. Um, world of new york city in the mid to late 90s into the early 2000s and so if you are of that generation that generation x or even heck my generation that was right behind gen x which is not quite millennials but it's not really gen x we're like this weird hybrid world of a generation some people call it generation y i don't know exactly how you want to portray us but we understand those things i mean granted i'm not a huge friends fan i don't find it that funny but for the Gen X crowd, that show was everything. And so that's why it's so valuable as a franchise is because it's streaming on HBO Max and I think the Peacock maybe um, because it still holds a big deal for people over the age of 40 because that's what they lived through. Whereas people like your generation, Rob, you just it doesn't resolve for you guys. And that makes perfect sense. I understand it. I don't like it, but I understand the people that do. But I'm not a fan. It is a significant weakness, though, which is the point. Like if, it's, if your show is just existing as a cultural touchstone and can't exist outside of that, it's, it's, a not, it's not indicative of it being a good show then. Because like I find Fresh Prince of Bel-Air hilarious. I find Seinfeld hilarious. I find Frasier hilarious. Plenty of other shows from around that time frame I really enjoy and find super funny. But if your show is only relevant as like a cultural inside joke 
to other people from around that area. Like that, that's a problem. So I, th- I think what it is, is like, I'm sure friends is hilarious to some other people. I don't think we're the target demographic for friends. No. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think it's supposed to, they're not trying to appeal to us. I, I suppose. But then see, and that's the difference between like that and it and Seinfeld, like Seinfeld was very pop culture, but it also created a lot of pop culture. Like that's a big difference there. Like, you know, there are still people today that say no soup for you and don't even understand where the joke came from because Seinfeld kind of changed the culture of what a sitcom could be. It, it is very frustrating because like the thing is, though, too, Trace, like people from my like my 23 year old generation, um, like they still watch Friends. That's like the one show from that area they watch. And it's like then I think it's just like it's like with anything, dude. Like, there's just some things that make make it to the cultural mainstream, and some that don't. And a lot of it's, I don't think, necessarily indicative of quality. Like, is The Office that much better of a show than like Arrested Development or, um, like The Good Place? There's other shows that haven't quite reached that level of popularity. I would say no. It's just mm-hmm. based on when it was shown and it being like on Netflix early and other things like that. It made it to the cultural mainstream stream in a way other shows didn't. No, that's a good point. The fact that it was on Netflix so easily accessible for everybody when streaming really came into its own does, you know, expose it to a whole different generation. So if you were a high school kid that got super into streaming friends on Netflix, then you're still going to have that attachment to the show just because it was something you're familiar with. So I, I hear where you're coming from. Cool, cool. We got any other emails, Seven? Oh, looks like we have a problem. Devin's gone. So I think this is probably a good place to wrap it up. Thank you guys. I'll play the role of Devin here. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to everybody that's getting to hear us now on the Mayo Media Network. For those of you that have been with us, thank you for supporting us as we got to this point, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.